a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. The Man from UNCLE, Film The Man from UNCLE is a 2015 American action spy comedy film directed by Guy Ritchie and written by Ritchie and Lionel Wigram. It is based on the 1964 Imgem television series of the same name, which was created by Ian Fleming, Norman Felton, and Sam Rolfe. The film stars Henry Cavill, Army Hammer, Alicia Vikander, Elizabeth Debicki, Jared Harris, and Hugh Grant. The film was produced by Rat Pack Dune Entertainment and Davis Entertainment. In 1993, John Davis obtained the rights for a film adaptation based on the original series. However, the film fell into development hell due to multiple script rewrites. Over the years, Matthew Vaughan, David Dobkin, and Steven Soderbergh were optioned for directing until Ritchie signed on in March 2013. The film premiered at Barcelona on August 2, 2015, and was released on August 14 by Warner Brothers receiving mixed reviews and grossing $109 million worldwide on a $75 million budget. Plot In 1963, at the height of the Cold War, professional thief-turned-CIA agent Napoleon Solo extracts Gabby Teller, daughter of Dr. Udo Teller an alleged Nazi scientist turned United States collaborator at the end of World War II, from East Berlin, evading KGB operative Ilya Koyakin, he later reports to his superior, Sanders, who reveals that Gabby's maternal uncle Rudy works in a shipping company owned by Alexander, and Victoria Vinci Guerra, a wealthy Nazi sympathizer couple who intend to use Teller to build their own private nuclear weapon and give it to lingering Nazi elements. Due to the potentially world-ending nature of this crisis, the CIA and KGB have reluctantly teamed up, and Solo and Koyakin are ordered to stop the Vinchgeras from succeeding, with both men secretly assigned to steal Udo Teller's research for their respective governments. The trio travels to Rome, where Gabby and Koyakin reluctantly pose as an engaged couple, and Solo pretends to be an antiquities dealer. Solo deduces they are being monitored and instructs Kayakin not to defend himself from muggers so as to preserve this cover. Despite their hostilities towards each other, Kayakin heeds his advice and does not react when his father's prized watch is stolen. Later, at an auto racing event promoted by the Vinchgeras, Solo and Gabby flirt with Victoria and Alexander to obtain information about Teller. Meanwhile Koyakin acquires evidence the Vinchgeras were recently exposed to radiation, indicating that their weapon is near completion. Solo and Koyakin begrudgingly join forces to break into a Vinchik where a shipping yard, in which they find traces of uranium. After accidentally setting off the alarm, they escape into the water, but find their way blocked. During a scuffle with the guards, Koyakin nearly drowns. Solo escapes but surprises himself by returning to save Koyakin, although a suspicious Victoria pursues them with her henchmen, Solo and Koyakin manage to slip past into their own rooms undetected. Victoria and Solo spend the night together. The following day, Gabby meets with Rudy and Alexander to discuss a job, but unexpectedly betrays Koyakin and Solo to them. Koyakin escapes, but Solo is drugged and captured by Victoria and taken to a nearby warehouse. There. Rudy, who is revealed as an infamous Nazi war criminal, tortures Solo in an electric chair. Solo is rescued by Koyakin, who tortures Rudy. Rudy reveals that the weapon is hidden in an island fortress where Gabby has been reunited with her father. The chair malfunctions, and Rudy is killed. Solo and Koyakin travel to the fortress. To protect Gabby, Dr. Teller pretends to resume work on the weapon, but intends to sabotage it. Victoria quickly sees through this deception, and his Alexander imprison Gabby as an incentive. Victoria kills him as soon as he has finished the weapon. Meanwhile, Solo and Koyakin are approached by Alexander Waverly, a high-ranking MI6 operative who reveals that Gabby is an undercover agent under his employment. He and members of the Special Boat Service help Solo and Koyakin infiltrate the Vinchgeras compound. Vinci Guerra attempts to escape with Gabby and the warhead but his intercepted guild. Solo retrieves the disc with Teller's research, but the warhead Vinci Guerra was taking with him was a non-nuclear secondary missile. Victoria has left undetected on another boat with a real warhead. Solo is able to contact Victoria via radio and keep her on the line long enough.
for Waverly to locate her and launch a homing missile, destroying the nuclear weapon and the boat, with Victoria on board. Koyakin confronts Solo in his hotel room, intending to kill him and steal the disc for the Soviet Union, but changes his mind. When Solo produces Koyakin's father's stolen watch, they instead share a drink on the terrace and burn the contents of the disc, so as to not give either of their countries the upper hand in the arms race. Reuniting with Gabby and Waverly, they are told that the trio has been reassigned to a new international organization under Waverly's command. Waverly gives them a new mission in Istanbul under a new codename, UNCLE. Development Producer John Davis optioned the film rights to the 1960s TV series in 1993, setting up a development deal for an adaptation with Warner Brothers and series producer Norman Felton. Davis has estimated that he commissioned 12 or 14 different scripts over the course of 20 years, with writers Jim and John Thomas, John Requa, Glenn Ficarra, and Scott Z. Burns. Quentin Tarantino was briefly attached following the success of Pulp Fiction but opted to make Jackie Brown instead. The man from UNCLE continued to labor in development hell with directors Matthew Vaughan and David Dobkin. Steven Soderbergh was attached to direct Scott Z. Burns' screenplay, with production slated to begin in March 2012. Executives from Warner Brothers wanted the budget to stay below $60 million, but Soderbergh felt that amount would not be adequate to fund the 1960s era sets. Props and international settings required for the film. Emily Blunt was nearly cast as the female lead, but she left the project shortly after Soderbergh departed in November 2011. Guy Ritchie signed on in March 2013. On July 31, 2013, it was announced that Ritchie's adaptation would start filming in September 2013 in London and Italy. The final production budget was approximately $75 million US. Casting in November 2010, George Clooney showed interest in the film, and was in talks for the lead role of Napoleon Solo. But he left in September 2011 due to a recurring back injury. After Clooney's departure, actors including Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Ryan Gosling, Channing Tatum, Alexander Skarsgård, Ewan McGregor, Robert Pattinson, Matt Damon, Christian Bale, Michael Fassbender, Bradley Cooper, Leonardo DiCaprio, Joel Kinnaman, Russell Crowe, Chris Pine, Ryan Reynolds, and John Hamm were considered for the lead role. On March 18, 2013, Tom Cruise was in early talks to take the lead in the film. Army Hammer was cast in the second lead role as Ilya Koyakun on April 24, 2013, with Cruise set as Solo. Swedish actress Alicia Vikander joined the film on May 8, 2013, as the female lead. On May 23, 2013, Cruise dropped out of the film, due to his commitment to Mission, Impossible Rogue Nation. British actor Henry Cavill replaced Cruz. Elizabeth Debicki was cast in a femme fatale role on July 31, 2013. Rose Byrne and Charlize Theron were earlier considered for the same part. On August 8, 2013, Hugh Grant joined the cast as Alexander Waverley, the head of United Network Command for Law and Enforcement. Jared Harris was cast as Sanders on September 4, 2013 and Luca Colvani was cast as a villain. Alexander. Simona Caparini was also cast. To play Contessa. Filming. Principal photography on the film commenced on September 9, 2013. In October 2013, filming was being underway at the old Royal Naval College in Greenwich, Royal Victoria Docks, London and Goodwood Motor Racing Circuit in West Sussex, UK. Filming took place in various locations throughout Italy, including the Gulf of Naples and Bay Castle. Kayakan and Teller's first outings as an assumed couple were shot at just below the Spanish steppes, the Grand Hotel Plaza, in Via del Corso, and in the gardens of ancient theatre of Marcellus. Two locations stood in place, for Berlin sites on either side of the wall. The public toilet fight between Solo and Koyakin was shot in Regent's Park in London, while the car chase during the movie's first act was shot in Chatham Historic Dockyard, Kent UK. Director Guy Ritchie finalized the script throughout production. He's quite intuitive and tends to constantly rewrite stuff, which he does even when they're shooting. He'll rewrite things in the morning if they're shooting that day, working with the actors if something doesn't feel right, says long-term collaborator David Alcock. Music 
The musical score for The Man from UNCLE was composed by Daniel Pemberton. A soundtrack album was released by Water Tower Music on August 7, 2015 who also released a behind-the-scenes video showcasing the many different elements of the process. The musical score received many glowing references in reviews of the film with the LA Times noting, it is composer Daniel Pemberton who in some ways seems to understand the idea of the movie even better than Ritchie. His score featuring breathy flutes, twangy guitar, spooky harpsichord and pounding drums and organ capturing the mixture of pastiche, homage, and a twist of the new in a way the rest of the film rarely matches. Box Office The Man from UNCLE grossed $45.4 million in North America and $64.4 million in other territories for the worldwide total of $109.8 million against a production budget of $75 million. The film grossed $900,000 from its early Thursday screenings and $4.8 million on its opening day. In its opening weekend, the film grossed $13.4 million, which was about $5 million below expectations, finishing third at the box office. It opened in Russia with $3.1 million. In the United Kingdom, it opened alongside Sony Pictures Pixels, earning $2.3 million, debuting at number 4, for Friday to Sunday, while Pixels was at number 1 with $4.2 million, including previews during the week. Warner Brothers did not preview The Man from UNCLE across Asia. It generated $2.7 million from six countries and $1.7 million in Australia. Critical Response on Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 66% based on 247 reviews, with an average rating of 6. 2 tenths. The site's critical consensus reads, The man from UNCLE tries to distract from an unremarkable story with charismatic stars and fizzy set pieces, adding up to an uneven action thriller with just enough style to overcome its lack of substance. On Metacritic, the film has a weighted average score of 55 out of 100, based on 40 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. On cinema score, audiences gave the film an average grade of B on an A plus to F scale. Possible sequel. In April 2017, it was reported that Wigram was working on the script for a sequel, at the suggestion of Hammer. Cavill stated that he would be excited to return for the sequel. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like?